good to see you. All of you lovely, shining, bright, shining Baptists. This is the end. This is the last day of Harpo Marx. <laughs> yes, and you know what that means? I know, I know all of you are reading your Bible every day. So, if you know somebody that um, wanna, you want to help them to start, I thought of something a couple the other, the other day. What, what do most people do when, they, when you say, okay, start reading your Bible? Where are they going to start? Well, that, that's the wrong place to start. Tell them to start in the New Testament and read one, one page or one chapter. And the New Testament is full of stories. And they, there's more there to keep their interest than the book of Genesis. They, they might not mind Genesis, but after they get through uh, Exodus uh, 24, 25, when they get to the tabernacle, they're going to die, <laughs> unfortunately. And then Leviticus and Numbers aren't much better. So anyway, uh, it... it the, 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 the thing to do is to create a habit. Before we got saved, we had bad habits. Reading your Bible every day is a good habit, but you have to establish a habit, and you just have to make yourself do it for a short time, and pretty soon it becomes a habit. You'll think, yeah, I, gotta, I have to do it today. You won't forget. And starting in the New Testament is much, much better. And don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, some people, they get all excited about, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to read a book a day. Oh, no, no, you won't get, you won't last long. Take a chapter or a, a page in your Bible. Now, once you, you know, once you get going, pick it up a little bit. You'll be able to pick it up a little bit. And we've got more people coming, so I'm going to... Not, not think about that, but think about something else. Anyway, just, just, and it doesn't have to be the first of the year to start, okay? Tell them they can start any time. That the, 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 the Lord hasn't set up any special requirements about Bible reading. He just wants you to read it. And I, I know um, from what we've read, you know, show them Psalms 1. It's... Um, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So it's something that happens, it should happen every day. Anyway, I know all of you are reading it, so I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir this morning, and I understand that. Was there anybody else in the parking lot, Rich? I, I can't imagine why. <laughs> anyway. Since this is since this this is the last Sunday I'll be uh, doing this, the preacher's going to start rightly dividing, which you're going to love. If you've never heard it, you're going to love that study. It will open the whole Bible up to you. Uh, but please listen to me. If you really want to be able to understand uh, his teaching, you've got to do your reading at home. Uh, the principle is. Uh, how many scriptures is when you're when you're interpreting the Bible? What's the method of Bible interpretation? How do you interpret the scripture? First Corinthians, Corinthians two, line upon line, scripture with scripture, scripture with scripture. See how that it's the same process as reading your Bible at home, coming to church in the mouth of not one, but two witnesses. Shall every word be established. If you're, if you're not reading at home, a lot of what he says is not going to, it, it, you might, it might go in, but it won't stay. It takes two or three uh, witnesses to establish what he said. 
Well, there's more coming in. I'm going to wait. It, does anybody have a question about, uh, about what I just said? The scripture was scripture. Yes. You see it reading it at home and you hear it being preached from the pulpit. Yes. Two witnesses. Yes. It's a yes. They are his eyes and his ears and they work best when they're on his word. Okay. I don't know if I brought this up to you before. Why doesn't the Lord, in general now, this is a general truth, not specifically, but in general, why, is, why does the Lord want it that way where you have to read it at home and then come and learn it from a, a preacher. There it is. It keeps you humble. God hates pride. And if you got all these revelations, let me tell you something, if you got all the revelations at home, you would suffer like Paul did. What did he say? Well, because of all the revelations that God gave him, the Lord beat him to death. You don't want it, you don't need to get it that way. The best way to get it is the humble way, where your pride does not say, well, man, God's talking to me directly, showing me all these wonderful things. Look out. Pride cometh before destruction, a haughty spirit before of all. It's just, it's, it's the process to keep us from getting proud. And Lord wants to use preachers to develop our Christianity. Uh, preachers and teachers. He's called pastors for the edification of the church. Well, if you could learn everything you needed at home. See? Now I'm going to uh, quickly... <laughs> I'm just quickly go through, well, I, I, I'm, I'm vacillating between two things here, and that's not good. Three times in your Bible, you, get, you have that statement on them, in the mouth of two witnesses. It's found in uh, Deuteronomy, and I don't have it written down, but it's found in Deuteronomy. It's found in Matthew 18, 16, and then it's found in 2 Corinthians uh, 11, 12, somewhere along in there. Three times. Those, that's God's signature. When something is important, it's connected with three. It's connected with a trinity. <clears throat> Take your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 26. And I know I, I went over these on the first time we studied, I think, something like this. But I'm going to show you the examples of this thing of the first and second witness. Because there are, there are a number of Bible examples of that truth. Matthew, Matthew 26, verse 70, um, I think it's 75. Sorry, uh, okay, the Lord had told Peter that he was going to deny him earlier in Matthew. What did Peter say? I want to, never say never. <laughs> You're setting yourself up uh, for a, 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 a definitely a, a test. Well, Peter said, yeah, not me. So, uh, in 2669, now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, and saying, I know not what thou sayest. Then verse 74, but he denies again in verse 72. <clears throat> then, verse 74, he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. There's the second witness. 
What did the Lord tell him? By the time the cock croaks, <laughs> croaks, whatever he does three times, you're going to deny me. If there's ever been a concerted effort to rid the world of chickens, Baptist preachers have tried to do them in ever since. <laughs> I mean, here's this chicken he told on, he told on Peter. Anyway, this here, just, just like uh, uh, our brother Keith said, the Lord told him, and then he, he heard this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a scripture, but it has to be the fulfillment of that scripture. But it's the second witness. He didn't believe the first one. Take your Bible now and turn to uh, Mark chapter 9. We'll go through Mark and Luke and John. There are the, oh, these, these examples. Mark chapter 9 verse 30. Mark chapter 9 verse 30. Um, Miss Amy, what I was saying before you got here, um, if you know someone who's having trouble reading their Bible, tell them to start in the New Testament. And tell them to start with one chapter or one page a day. Just, you know, don't make it too, too hard. But start in the New Testament. The New Testament is much easier to read than the Old Testament. I mean... Make it as simple as possible and try to, if they can create a habit of reading one, one page or one chapter a day through the book of Matthew, by the time they get to the end of Matthew, they're going to have a habit established. Okay, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Uh, I don't know where I'm at now. Where am I? I'm on Sears Road. That's where I am. Right, verse 30. And they departed thence, passed through Galilee, and he would not, uh, he would not that any man should know it, whatever he had told them about uh, previously. For he had taught the disciples, saying unto them, The Son of Man is delivered in the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall uh, rise the third day. But they, what? They understood not. See, all they've got is one witness. And it's hard for them to believe. It's hard for them to believe the one witness, and it's also hard for them to believe that, that this is going to happen to him. And they believe not. Uh, but they understood not the, the, the saying. All right, let's turn to Luke 24. Last chapter in the book of Luke. Okay. Everybody looks up, we'll start. Luke 20, 24, 1. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Well, obviously they don't believe what he had told them more than once that he was going to rise again. And here they are bringing stuff to anoint a dead body. But all they've got is one witness. He told them that. That's all. That's all they've got. They don't understand. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. They, they still don't understand. They're about, the whole two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their knees, their faces to the earth, they said unto them, What? They, the angel said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered under the hands of the sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered. Second witness. All right, take your Bible and turn to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Sometimes we berate the disciples for, why did they get this? I mean, here's the Lord Jesus Christ telling them that. They weren't meant to get it right then. Why did he tell them that? Because they have to have the first witness. And there's another, there's another reason. 
Uh, sometimes you need to know you don't know everything. <laughs> okay. The best thing you'll ever do in your life is ask for help. And that's the worst thing a man wants to do. I don't know anything about women, but I don't want to ask for help. I don't need the, I don't need the book of directions. I can, I can make this thing myself. I can put this thing together. Just watch. <laughs> my, my wife just, you know, she just looks and shakes her head. And, okay. John chapter 2. John chapter 2, verse 17. And it, and, uh, well, start, start with, this is where Jesus is in the temple, and he went up to Jerusalem, verse 13, and found in the temple those that sold oxen, sheep, doves, and the changers of money, sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple, uh, and the sheep, and the oxen, and, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables, and said, Scripture, and said unto them that sold, Take these things, hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Second witness. Then remembered that it was written. Now this time it wasn't something that happened that he said to them. It was something, where is this statement from? Then they, re, then they, then they remembered it was written, the zeal of thine house hath eaten thee up. That's the Psalms. Here they had read the Psalms who knows how many times and how many and they didn't understand what that was what that was. But now they uh, who are experiencing this this uh, situation, they understand what that verse means. The connection is made. The second witness is given. John chapter 2 verse 16. And that, listen, that, if there was ever a case for reading your Bible, there in John 2, that's the case. If they had to have been reading the Psalms, they wouldn't have understood what was going on. They would be like those guys were at the, at the uh, tomb, much perplexed. Then you'd have to go to a doctor and get pills and get all straightened up, you know, get your head messed around. Anyway, John chapter, uh, John chapter 12 John chapter 12. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem and took branches of palm trees and went forth to, to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat, on, sat thereon as it is written, quote, Fear not, daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that those remembered remembered they that though these things were written of him, and they that had done. Well, I, I tell you, there's too many duns and these and that. And anyway, read it for yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm sorry, I just can't seem to get, get the, but you get the gist. They had read it in the Old Testament, and now they're actually seeing the fulfillment of it, and they're understanding it. But they would not have understood it had they not read the Old Testament. That's, I mean, that's the point. The point is, if you're not reading your Bible at home, you're not going to understand all, all, everything that the preacher wants to help you with. Obviously, you're going to get some things. But, I mean, you get all dressed up and you come to church, you need to get everything. You go to that much trouble? You young people, you don't have any idea. I'll tell you what. I, I used to love to get, get dressed up and go to church. Now it's a chore. It, take, it, you don't know how, it takes me 10 minutes to button all the buttons. I can't get my fingers to work. I, for the first time this year, I was able to... To put this little doohickey on here that extends the, extends the collar. I mean, you wouldn't believe how long it takes. Well, I don't know how I get on all that anyway. 
<laughs> yes, that's when somebody else gets your gold, brother. That's what that is. The, the doctors and the lawyers love it. <laughs> Again, the whole system is consistent. In the mouth of two witnesses, shall every word be established. And when I, I started out by quoting 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in verse 12, now we've received a, not the, the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, 2.12, 2.13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing Scripture with Scripture. To make it a little uh, more complicated, he says, um, <clears throat> which things we speak. He's the preacher, and he's speaking these things, and in order for the hearers to understand, they had to have had the first witness. They have had to have Scripture before what he's giving them will uh, answer, you know, explain the thing. The best way, the best thing you can ever do for somebody is, the, if if you want a copy, I I I make a copy. Of, there's only about. Five or six verses here that proves beyond any shadow. Well, actually, there's more than that, counting Matthew 18, 16. But if you can just, you say, can there ever be a revival? No. The problem is, the King James Bible is out of the homes of America. The only, the only route for every revival in England or the United States, the basis of it was the King James Bible. After the King James Bible was replaced by the, the uh, uh, ASV in 1901 and the RSV in 1948, we have never had a revival since. People aren't reading the King James at home, and they're not hearing the King James in the pulpit. And it's the Word of God that reveals the things of God, not the Word of man. But you can experience a revival in your heart, and you can experience a revival in your church. I'll tell you what, folks. You, well, I'm sure most of you do, but this is, this is wonderful what's happening here. I mean, we're being fed... Uh, we're just like those lepers in the Old Testament that went into those tents that the, the enemy had left, and here's all this stuff. And they're just, they're just consuming it on their lusts. And then one of them says, oops, we do not well. The folks back in the town haven't got anything. Let's take them some. Well, that's what we're doing. The preacher's feeding us and gives us a chance to take it to somebody else. Let me tell you, Three things about your Bible, you, maybe you already know. It talks. So how do you know that? Did you ever read the verse, what saith the Scripture? If we wrote it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't write it like that. It says that because it talks. When the Lord reminds you of a verse, you hear a voice. In the mind. What saith the scripture? Um, it sees. Hebrews chapter 4. I read this, I, I read this before you before. Uh, the, the, in Hebrews chapter 4. You have to understand the principle of. The uh, subject and antecedent. In chapter chapter 4. For the word of God, the, the, the subject is the word of God. Quick and powerful and sharper, than, you, you know that. Discerner of the thoughts and tense. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Whose? Who does the his refer back to? The word of God. 
That thing has eyes. Oh, I don't see them. Hey, have you ever, have you seen the Holy Spirit that moved into your body when you got saved? There's a lot of things we don't see with the physical eye that are still true. Galatians 3.11, uh, Galatians 3.8. I'm going the wrong way there. Galatians 3.8, not only does it talk, not only does it see, Galatians 3.8, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify uh, the heathen through faith preached before the preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, "In the whoa, 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 who spoke to Abraham in the Old Testament? It was God. It was God. Why did they put Scripture in there?" And not only is he giving the Word of God human or physical attributes, it not only sees, it foresees. This is the only book that can tell you what's going to happen. One more thing and I'm done. These are just some basic things that you'll get this is the positive uh, rewards of reading your Bible. Well, some folks like it. Faith is the only place you can get in your Bible. That didn't come out right. The Bible is the only place you can get faith. How about that? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the what? So you can't get faith from an RSV. You can't get faith from a... The New Living Bible or the Old Living Bible. The Old Dead Bible is what they are. Well, come on in, brother. Have a seat. Do you mind if I start over? <laughs> no. No. Um. Faith cometh, Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Is there anything you can do to please God other than through faith? Only by faith pleases God. Hebrews chapter, I believe it's Hebrews chapter 10, faith chapter. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. The question is, when, if, somebody, if you're dealing with somebody about reading their Bible, ask them, how much faith do you want? It's up to you. You're not going to get faith from a television set. You're not going to get faith from a, from, a, from a phone book. Although, I'll tell you what, what a great cast. <laughs> not much of a plot, but... <laughs> Your new man requires what? He, he requires some kind of food. He's a spiritual man. Uh, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. He isn't talking about the old man. He's talking about the new man. Okay. The Bible is likened to bread in Matthew 4.4. 4. Uh, it is likened to meat in Galatians 5.17. And it's likened to uh, honey in Psalm. It's like honey in Psalm one nineteen one oh three. Milk, meat, uh, strong meat, and uh, bread. Those are the things that feeds the new man. Every time you read your Bible, you're feeding the new man. Okay, who do you want to win the battle between the old man lusts against the new man? It says in Galatians chapter five. Obviously, the stronger one's going to win. Amen, preacher! I amen myself.
strength. The Word of God is quick and powerful. You want strength? How much strength do you want? Well, I'll read two verses a day, preacher. Okay. Okay. That's what you'll get. How much truth do you want? Thy word is truth. Sanctify them with it. He said, sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is truth. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be lied to. Want wisdom? 2 Timothy 3.15 Thou hast, and, and uh, if I'm a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee, make thee wise unto salvation through faith, as in Christ. All Scriptures given by inspiration. You want to be inspired? It's profitable for doctrine and reproof. You want, to, want something that will profit you? That the man of God may be perfect. You want to be perfect? Truly furnished, through and through, and all good works. That's what comes with the, with the Word of God. Strength, wisdom, understanding, truth. <sighs> the Bible says in Matthew 22, Jesus said to a bunch of guys there in Matthew 22, you do err not knowing the Scriptures. Romans 15, 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Okay. He's talking about the Old Testament. That we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures. There, there are two things that people desperately need. And that's patience and comfort. You're not going to get them anywhere else. They won't last. Uh, the comfort that you need comes from the Scriptures. It's, it's, uh, it's the storehouse of faith, food, strength, truth, wisdom, free from error, full of comfort. Any questions? I hate to be done, but I'm done. I, I haven't got a minute. <laughs> no. Yes? Four. Right. Uh, Schofield Bible has 1,300 and, 1,356 pages. I think that's what, and that's, I'm not counting the concordance and the maps and all that stuff, obviously. And in a Schofield Bible, 1,353. And all I did was divide that by 365. I mean, you got to have a, you, you know, who knows how to do long division or. You know, you get your computer out and you keep it simple. Keep it simple. Stupid. Anyway, <clears throat> and I learned that four pay. Now, if I, I could, if, if it uh, seems to take too long, I don't know about you, but I know you could read four pages because it take. It, I'm a slow reader, and I read it. Right now, I'm in numbers, and I haven't even turned over the first of the year yet. I've already, I, in other words, I've read it. I've read it. I'm ahead. I can't hardly explain how, how this. Anyway, for the last eight or ten years, I finished reading the Bible somewhere around October, November, early December. And I start on the, you know, I'm, I get a running start on the, 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 the beginning, the first of the year. And it takes me, I'm actually getting through it in less than a year now, obviously. But, uh, you got to have a want to. If there is, if there is a person, uh, what is it? Willing mind. Four and a half pages. Well, but see that, you're not reading really any more scripture. That's just the notes, and you don't have to read the notes. Yeah, there are more notes in that than there is in a Schofield. 
In a regular, if you, you talk about a regular, a regular Bible, you're probably talking about 11 or 1200 pages. And it's, that's a whole, you know, that'd be a whole lot less uh, per day than would to, 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 do, to do the Schofield. Any other questions or comments? All I'm saying, it is the key to everything a Christian needs.